Hey everyone, uh, here we got a quick lesson on work done by an external force. So we've talked already about the total mechanical energy of an object, which is the sum of the kinetic energy and all forms of potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, which is found by taking one half mv squared. Potential energy or stored energy can be either gravitational or elastic. Now the gravitational potential energy equation is mgh, while the spring potential energy equation is one half kx squared. The total mechanical energy is just the sum of all those types of energy combined. We've talked about the conservation of mechanical energy, which says that in the absence of external non-conservative forces, the mechanical energy is conserved, so the amount of mechanical energy remains constant. So the initial mechanical energy equals the final mechanical energy. This is only true in the absence of any external forces, right? So if we have a situation where the only force acting on an object is gravity and a spring, then we can use this. However, not all forces, as you probably know, are conservative. The internal or conservative forces are like gravity, spring and elastic forces, electrical forces, and magnetic forces. All other types of forces are external or non-conservative. So applied force, tension, normal force, friction, force from a motor, those are all external forces and they actually change the total mechanical energy of an object. The work, kinetic, sorry, the work energy theorem is that the net work done by external forces equals the change in total mechanical energy, or WNC equals delta E. Right? Or we can write this as the initial mechanical energy plus work done by non-conservative forces equals the final energy. And sometimes that work done by non-conservative forces is going to be negative, which of course means that we'll end up with less energy than we started with. This is not to be confused with the work kinetic energy theorem. The work kinetic energy theorem is about the network acting on an object, which is the combined conservative and non-conservative forces. Okay, so when we combine the conservative and non-conservative forces, we get a change in kinetic energy. Another interesting thing here is that if we throw in the fact that the opposite of the work done by conservative forces is the change in potential energy, it all kind of uh, makes sense. It all comes together here. So the work done by non-conservative forces still is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Okay, let's apply this to an example. Pause here if you think you can do this on your own. It's not super difficult, so I would suggest it. Uh, otherwise, just follow along with me. We have a firework that's launched from this position. A non-conservative force generated by the burning propellant does 425 joules of work, and it raises to a height of 29 meters above its starting point. We need to figure out how fast this rocket is moving if it has a mass of 0.2 kilograms. So we know that the initial energy that it starts with plus the work done by non-conservative forces is going to be equal to the final energy that it ends with. So let's set our reference point equal to right here because we don't know how high it is above the ground and this h sub zero would cancel out anyways. So we can say that the work done by the non-conservative force is going to be equal to the amount of potential energy plus the amount of kinetic energy it has right here, right? Because we have no starting energy. So the first thing we should do is figure out how much gravitational potential energy it has here at the end. We do that by taking 2, which is the mass, I think it's 2, no, sorry, 0.2, which is the mass, times gravity, which is 10, times the height, so we just have 2 times the height, 58 joules. Then we can find the kinetic energy by subtracting that from the work that is done by the engine. Then we set that kinetic energy equal to 1 half mv squared, solve for our velocity, and we get 61 meters per second. That's it for that lesson. Um, it was a pretty quick one, and we will work on some practice problems when we meet next time.